Good morning. Welcome to the Tuesday, Wednesday morning edition of Mornings with Stanley. Got Stanley right here. <sighs> Had our prayer group this morning. So today's my day off from exercising. I don't know if that's the right way to be, but I give my body two days a week to, re to rest. And they're two busy days otherwise. So Sundays and Wednesdays are my days off. Anyway, Stanley is, we had our walk this morning and it's a beautiful, beautiful day. You know, it's the temperature supposed to be tonight, 77 this afternoon and I hope winter's over. Don't you hope winter's over, Stanley? Beautiful sunny day. Tonight's, it's Ash Wednesday, so we have Ash Wednesday service, two of them. One's more for the kids, or we're calling it wow, Family Wow, our worship on Wednesdays our kids stuff. So we invited the families to come and have supper with the kids. And then we're going to, um, <coughs> then we'll have a little Ash Wednesday service for the kids. The kids love getting the ashes on their foreheads. And then we'll have another Ash Wednesday service for, um, the rest of the church at seven o'clock tonight and have choir start a little bit late tonight. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, other than that, I don't know that there's anything for me to say. I don't know, so I guess I'll I'll evict this man, this little puppy. <laughs> Kick him out in the hallway. And we'll do our reading. Lucy is outside and Doing well, I guess. <coughs> Here's our reading. Wednesday of week 38. Saints and Caesar's household. The next verse is illuminating. Greet every saint in Christ Jesus. The brethren who are with me greet you. All the saints greet you, especially those of Caesar's household. That's Philippians 4.21. Someone is defined a saint as one who tries a little harder. That's a false notion of a saint, a person who struggles hard to be good, who whips up the will. The New Testament type of saint is different. The saint is not one who tries hard to be good, but one who surrenders to the goodness, to, surrenders to goodness, to Jesus. Not one who whips up the will, but one who surrenders the will. Not one who resists primarily, but who receives primarily. New Testament prescription, live in union with Christ. And the sainthood takes care of itself automatically in union with Christ. His goodness is your goodness. His saintliness is your saintliness. Unconsciously so. A conscious saintliness is less than saintly. Like Moses, we do not know that our face shines, but it does. Note the environment of the saintliness. Caesar's household. Of all places, Caesar's household, a place of intrigue, of lust of the flesh and lust of the spirit for power. No one was safe from whispering tongues. Comparable to this is a situation in Nitzam's palace in Hyderabad, where no two of his numerous wives are allowed to speak to each other. Three guards watch each one night and day. Saintliness out of what? Out of that? It happened in Caesar's household. Paul knew, for he was a prisoner in one of Caesar's household prisons. If by remaining in union with Christ, the members of Caesar's household became saints, living as they did in two worlds at once, then it is possible to be a saint anywhere. A friend of mine high up in India's government is called a sadhu, a holy man in government. He lives in a sticky environment, but none of it sticks to him. He simply lives in union with Christ day by day, hour by hour, moment by moment, and he emerges an unconscious saint. Here's our prayer for today. Oh God, if I have to live in a little Caesar's household where I am daily subjected to temptation to respond in kind, let me remember that I belong to your household even when my body has to live in Caesar's. Let me absorb your goodness amid this, amid this badness. Amen. And our affirmation for the day, I live the heavenly life amid a very hellish 
environment. Jesus is Lord.